Okay, my name's Nina. <laughs> you got this. You got this. You got this. My name's Harder. <laughs> I'm trying to introduce myself. And what is my name? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. My name is Neon. I'm Robin. My name is Red, and we are all nursing students at Centennial Morningside. And together we started Centennial Christian, Christian Fellowship. Fellowship. Yay! And we started off a year and a half ago, and it was just me and Robin first. And it started off um, when I went to a conference, a party change conference. Um, I was situated with Ryerson, and, um, and I was the only student that went to Centennial. I'm not a student yet, but I was going to Centennial. And then, uh, I really wanted to start a campus ministry at Centennial, but there wasn't any ministry. And so uh, we have, me and Robin had a mutual friend, and she introduced us together. It started off just me and Neon in the in the beginning. At first, when when we got together, we weren't even thinking like about the possibility of a fellowship. We kind of just wanted to gather a few Christians together, and we didn't think there'd be too many Christians at Centennial College Morningside, but I think just slowly God began to just bring people into our lives without us even doing anything. Um, and it's funny because, um, kind of like Jonah, I kept running away from, from, from God in a sense where I didn't want to start a fellowship. I didn't feel like it was possible and I didn't think I don't know, I, I kind of just wanted to concentrate on school and, and my academics. So yeah, I actually said no to starting a fellowship first to someone else and then secondly to Neon when she brought it up. And then, I don't know what happened the third time, I think. The third time I, I was like, okay, yeah, I think it's feasible, I think we can do this fellowship thing. But I think it was only until after people started showing up when we thought like, it, this could be possible. It's funny, because you said you feel like Jonah. I felt like Moses. I wasn't really a good speaker. I stutter a lot, and I was shy too. I don't even know how I got to where I am. I don't stutter that much anymore. She's gotten so much better. Gone, like She used to not like pray in public, not even just one-on-one. -on -one. So I think, yeah, she's gotten a lot better. She's gotten so comfortable. Yeah. Praying to God, not so that people could hear sweet prayers. <laughs> the very first day of class, um, uh, we had a, we had a break time, and then suddenly Robin went in the class, and me and my friend Ken were talking, and then suddenly we just heard a big bang on the <laughs> floor. We looked at her, and we're like, what's this girl's problem? Because she dropped her bag. Because the, the class was. was Became silent because of his because of her bag. Because uh, Robin arrived. Mm -hmm. And then so I'm like, Ken, okay, let's move aside, and let her pass. Okay. And then when he, when she passed by, she dropped her bag again. I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with this girl. And the next class, uh, me and Ken sat in front of her, and then suddenly uh, she noticed that Ken and I were talking about uh, Christian songs because we we're preparing for uh, worship finals. And then she asked Ken, oh, are you Christian? And then Ken was like, yeah. And this is my friend Rex, she's a Christian too. And then, yeah, she said, oh, that's cool. And then, yeah, she mentioned about CCF. And I'm actually surprised because I never, I, I didn't know that we have a Christian fellowship in September Morningside until that time. So I'm like so excited to join. And it was so weird because like, that exact day, like I didn't even talk to Rhett that much. I talked to Ken more. Like this dude named Rhett added me on Facebook, and I didn't, I didn't know who he was. I was like, who is this guy? Like, like what the heck? I, I had no idea who you were, cause I thought your name was Red, like the color red. Yes, my heart.
to um, go to Centennial. Uh, I pl applied to 15 different programs, um, all different, not nursing. Um, and then for some reason, only Centennial got back to me. Uh, the rest, I felt like they forgot me, but I think that was a good thing because I look back at uh, where I am today. I don't look back at it as a negative thing or a shameful thing. I was an atheist before someone shared the gospel with me, um, but I didn't hear the gospel before. I never heard it. Um, I heard people say, like, blasphemy of Jesus, and I was just like, who's Jesus? Um, why, why are people so offended when um, other people use his name in vain? And why is people so chill about it? My brother's friend uh, came over to our place, um, and he was very passionate about Jesus. And I was just like, uh, Jesus? Who's Jesus? Uh, he's God. He's the Son of God. I'm like, oh, that's so confusing. I don't know. I didn't believe I was a sinner. Uh, I thought I was good. But I did lots of other things that I guess you said was sinful. Him sharing the gospel with someone like me really impacted me because if I never heard the gospel, I don't think I would, would be here now and I wouldn't have the desire to go out there and share it with others. Can you repeat the question one more time? How did I feel called to do CCF? Initially, what happened was this one girl approached me at Centennial and she's like, and we were friends before, before being students at Centennial. She asked me to start a fellowship with her, and I, I said no. I just didn't feel like I was ready. I didn't feel like it was feasible. I, I thought I would rather focus my time and energy on my academics and doing well in school. I, I consider that my first time saying no to God in terms of starting a fellowship, and then I met Nia, and she, and she asked me the same question, do you want to start this fellowship, and I said, I said no, again. Can you give oh. your advice as we talk? Is it rolling? Just behind the scenes. As many it's as It's rolling. You can. Make sure you keep, you, is you it? take a picture before. Oh. Oh, it is? Okay. Okay. Uh, no, you're talking. Let me get food. The food was with her when you were talking. I guess what motivated me to change my mindset about starting the fellowship was when, despite me not trusting that God could work with anything, he started placing things in line. It's a question. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, um, so, so, wait, sorry. Basically, I, I had to return to year two, and it was a, such a disappoint, disappointing um, part of my life. That was the time that I was asking God, why I did my best, but why, 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 why? Before the class started, I was able to watch God. God, God's not dead, and it really motiv motivated me and inspired me that it's possible for us to um, to uh, to prove that God is not dead to 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 in, in campus ministries. Also, after that, I was able to um, watch some sermon series about the Book of Re uh, Revelations and. That really uh, uh, motivate, motivated me because um, it made me aware that the second, the second coming is really coming soon. And we have to really spread the word out there, you know. And like, I feel bad for these, for the other people that haven't heard about the gospel. So, the role of prayer. One really... What are you doing? We're listening. Oh, weird. Stop. Okay, so one really good story about prayer. And look at them. Um, so, okay, one really good story of prayer. <laughs> okay, so one really good story about prayer was... Okay, so it starts off with me and Neon just, just talking, and she's telling me that she's been fasting, right? And I was thinking, it's not Lent season, it's not... Like, she's not doing a 30-hour famine. Why Why is she fasting, right? Indirectly, like, like Mia taught me about prayer because I decided to try it out. What I chose to fast for was my friend, my non-Christian friend who I wanted to come out to CCF. And I've been praying for him for, like, 
um, happy year. To be honest, I expected God to answer me. I expected God to br somehow bring him to fellowship. But during Friday, the, during the fellowship, he didn't actually show up. And I was kind of pissed at God because it's like, what the heck, you know? I, I'm taking a leap of faith and you're not really coming through for me. So, like, what's up? But to my surprise, during the middle of CCF, we were, the three of us were just going through, like, like the program and whatever. Um, three people ended up coming. Three non-Christians ended up coming to join our Bible study. And I remember the feeling of just seeing people walk into the room. I was like, I was just floored, you know, because I didn't tell them I was praying for my one friend until after the, the fellowship, like after that meeting. And it was it was kind of like just a me and God moment where I knew like, okay, Robin, like you were wrong. God, it wasn't that God didn't follow through. It's the fact that God followed through and he went even further because he brought three people instead of the one person I was praying for. Like, it kind of did suck that that one person didn't, didn't come out, but God brought three people who have been coming out to fellowship. And I just thought, like, wow, that's so amazing, you know? And, and it's cool that Neon was the one who, who inspired me to fast and to pray because she was actually, in the beginning, she was actually really shy about praying in public, praying with more than, like, like one person. And so for her to teach me, for someone who is so uncomfortable with prayer to teach me about prayer, it, it was a really big thing for me and it showed me that God can really use anything and anyone to teach teach a lesson and to really show His, His power, His glory. It was a really big lesson of prayer for me because I think a lot of the times we neglect prayer because it doesn't seem like effective. Um, but in fact, prayer is a really powerful tool. It's, and I think I've learned throughout CCF and through Neon that prayer isn't about God answering our prayers as much as it is about us, God, God teaching us how to depend and trust more on Him. God doesn't need prayer. Like, let's just, let's just put that out. He doesn't need us to pray to Him, you know? Like, the reason God commands us to pray is so that we would learn to trust in Him more and that we would see more of who He is. Throughout the year, we had some trials and challenges. And I would say one of those is our schedule. Like, we are all nursing students. I believe that this is one of the reasons, like, one of the cause why we had that um, second thought if we're going to do this, right? Because we had to focus on our studies. We had to uh, uh, put some time on meeting up with each other, preparing for Bible study tools and materials and content and stuff. And like there were times that we had to meet up for like eight hours to just to prepare. So yeah, it's really a big sacrifice. And another trial that we went through was um, we can never find a room um, to do Bible studies or to pray. Centennial is such a small school with lots of students. And so it's really challenging to find a classroom. So that was really hard. And our sessions, our Bible sessions would go for so long because the main reason is looking for classrooms. So there was this, there was this one room that um, Centennial had, it was the multi-faith room, and we decided, um, well, we, we three weren't there, but our, uh, the students that were in um, our fellowship, they decided to use that room. And we thought um, that since it's a multi-faith room, it's okay to um, do our Bible studies there, we're, we're quiet, we're not doing anything um, so loud. Like, we didn't have a worship team at that. There was this, this man, um, and he got really angry at the sight of um, this, this group, this really small group, probably only five students or less, and he yelled at them, he got really angry. I think one reason is because we are not an official group, so it's really a challenge, but I would say this is a good, all the grace of God because we were able to continue the fellowship throughout the year even though we didn't have that. Uh, like a facilitator. Centennial Christian Fellowship is has only survived because of the grace of God and by the power of God. The three of us, the, the, us three leaders, we're actually pretty different as people. We all come from different backgrounds. Like Neon, she's Vietnamese, <coughs> Rhett is Filipino, and I'm Chinese. And we also come from three really different branches of Christianity. In the beginning, I think we had a lot of just 
butt heading with different views and I think that was a really big challenge for us to overcome. But over time, God, I think God taught us that at CCF is supposed to have just one view in Matthew 28. I'm sure everyone's familiar with this, but it's the calling to go and make disciples. And that vision is greater than our differences, our little differences. And I think we just came to terms with that because we realized that uh, there's something bigger than than like our little views, uh, whether that be like different theological views or like whatever else, right? And I think that's one of the most important things in having a fellowship. Um, it's understanding that there is a bigger vision. We were just ordinary people captivated by um, the beauty of the gospel. Um, we had the urgency to share the gospel with those on our campus. And it could be anyone. Um, it, you just have to let go and say yes to God. I think the concept of sharing the gospel can be a really hard, hard thing for people. Um, at least it is for me. When you have something so good, it's very natural to want to share. So let me give you an example. So let's say you got into Harvard Law School. That's crazy news. Like you don't want to just keep it to yourself. You want to post it on Facebook, on Twitter. You want to share it with your friends, your family. You want to call up like your grandma. You want to tell everyone about this great news, right? It's only natural. So in a way, that's what the gospel is. There's a parable in the Bible where this dude, he finds this treasure in a piece of land, and it's such an awesome treasure, like he sells everything he has. Having God in our lives is kind of like that, where we find this awesome, this awesomeness, this piece of awesomeness, like there's nothing else that can compare to what you, you found, and that's kind of like what yeah, it's kind of like what God is. This one also added an uh, encouragement to, like, if you're if you're planning to have like a disciple, um, um, to be part of a campus ministry group, make sure that the communication will be good and you guys will have transparency uh, within the group, so that you may be able to avoid any uh, conflict and be able to adapt to each other's differences. We have that. We have those moments, but we were able to um, adapt to each other's differences. We're all just regular, ordinary people, so we're nothing special, really. Yeah. And I'm still amazed at why God would choose people like us. Like, why? Right? Why would like, God want to use people like us? CCF is a story of how God can use ordinary people, like me on Red and Me. This can be anyone's story. You only need to say yes to God calling you. It's going to be all worth it because actually we have people, non-Christian people in our group who accepted Christ. And it's so rewarding. All the sacrifices that we have, um, we have that we had. You don't always see the fruit of your labor, but when you do, it's so it's so rewarding. Like you can see the fruit of your labor when you work every day that you've gone through. You know, I remember in the beginning of CCF, I was praying to God and I was like, okay, God. Okay, I'll do CCF, I'll do this, I'll follow you. And I think, I told God, I think even if one person accepts Christ through our efforts and, and through the Holy Spirit, uh, it'll all be worth it. Look into the people's eyes. <laughs> yeah. Look into the audience. Is this how YouTubers feel like? Right? What do you know? Dundee Catch. Woo! Wait, me on first. Why am I starting to order a pair? On camera? Can we go eat after? Oh, you should film this. There's some Tenya lobsters.